And of course, uh, I think we are ready to do uh, a fabulous virtual set demo. And I don't know, you guys probably know this already because you've been listening to Rob, but Rob Powers uh, actually created the first virtual art department. Art department the bad. Uh, the what? The bad. The bad uh -huh. for James Cameron for the movie Avatar. And uh, so now you're going to see some tools that are very exciting. Uh, and this is the whole virtual set tool. And you want to bring the team yep, on. Absolutely. Thank you, Kiki. Okay, you got it. All right. So also, first, I want to just say uh, hello to Fran Franquino Lupo oh, that's in great. Roma because you know, he uh, is gonna. He did one of the sets that we're gonna be showing lately. But we uh, love our international users, and, and I wanted to say hello. Um, uh, the character as well. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So, Frankino, hello. Um, so, I'm excited to share with you right now what we're gonna be showing. This is, um, you know, really a a, a great uh, demonstration. Not only because of our technology, but just conceptually. I believe in virtual production. I believe in what it brings to the process. Um, I am an art director. I'm in the ADG. I was an art director on Tintin. Uh, I created the uh, virtual art department on Avatar, but also uh, supervised the virtual art department here in Los Angeles on Tintin. Um, some of this technology, when you're doing cutting edge stuff, is, has not been decided yet. It hasn't been figured out. You know, I, I'm, I'm uh, so fortunate to have been uh, on the original team with Jim Cameron and to work through that process. And I'm here to say that oftentimes people say to me when we have these conferences and talk about virtual production, actors, directors, cinematographers, art directors say, the technology is going to replace me. Great, you know, thanks for coming in and taking my job away. And that is really the opposite of what th this technology does. This technology facilitates the artist. It facilitates the actor. If you think about the thing that moved us in a film like Avatar, it was really the performance that Zoe gave I can say I was one of the people that's fortunate enough to have seen her performance on the set and see the final film. And there were 200 people standing on the set of Avatar and you could hear a pin drop because her performance was that moving. The same moving performance was also given on screen by the digital character Natiri and it was the same continuity. So technology is here to facilitate that. What I'm excited to share with you is we've got a PlayStation 3 hooked up here. We're just going to show uh, change over to our set. This is actually the first set that I did in digital to prove the concept. So it's a little bit, you know, it's, it's where the technology was at the time as far as real time. We've implemented this workflow in Lightwave. So I'm using a PlayStation 3 device, simple PlayStation 3. They have the trigger on the bottom. If you, how many of you have PlayStation uh, devices? Okay. So the Move controller is like $49 at Fry's or whatever. We've got five of these on stage we're going to be uh, showing. We have Lino Grande here to my right, which is an amazing artist and technical director on our team. We have Dave Verba, the lead on this project on our team, uh, has done amazing work for this. We've worked together to collaborate on these tools. But I think, I mean, honestly, I have a unique skill set uh, in this area because of, of my background, but I'm excited to have this technology be used by everyone, not just in our product, but in all products. I think this is something that is very useful and I want to show you, and I'm moving through the set. You pull the trigger on the bottom like a gun, and I can zoom in. I hit the top button, and I hold the trigger, and it allows me to zoom out. Now, you can pick a shot that you like, and you hit one button. Let's say I want to compose. Maybe I want that foreground in the shot a little bit, and I freeze. Then you, you, you can frame grab this scene, send it to your art director, your production designer, uh, make the camera live again. I'm moving through the virtual set again. This is with Lightwave off the shelf. These device drivers have been integrated for $14.95. We have PlayStation 3 hooked up. All you need to do this on an art department or a television or a video game to do these walkthroughs exactly in the same way. We're location scouting like we were doing on the film, like Jim, Cam Jim Cameron shot in this environment for the film. So you can see all the elements that an art department would have had. And Dave is also, are you controlling a light in the scene? I do have a light in the scene. Wow, well that's something we've added uh, since, uh, but, but Dave is puppeting that light, controlling that light in the scene. I'm doing the camera all in real time in Lightwave with this off the shelf hardware. So if you get to a shot you like, you just freeze it. You can export that with the push of a button, send it to your art director, production designer, uh, all with Lightwave, no extra stuff. Now, the first version of this, we implemented the InnerSense VCAM system which is the same system we used on Avatar and that Bob Zemeckis used on uh, you know, uh, the Christmas Carol film and other things. That is a great device which also comes integrated out of the package. 
we, but we have added PlayStation 3. We also support the 3D connection devices like the Space Tracker. You plug that USB in, and it is configured to move through and do walkthroughs and, and uh, fly-throughs of your scenes. But let's go ahead and go off of this and load up our next scene. What we're going to show you now is kind of our next version, what we've added, the features we've added to this. So virtual camera and lighting is awesome. This is something we added, but you know, it really is, technology is the interface between uh, the human element, which is the actor, the cinematographer, the lighter, uh, the director. All of those things are, are, are uh, important elements in a film. When you can have that group, that team come together and facilitate uh, the collaboration in the moment, that is filmmaking. So we're just gonna load up another scene here that we've set up to illustrate, kind of take the concept beyond virtual cameras show you how you can take these devices, these move controllers, and have multiple devices driving multiple things. All and simultaneously. I, all simultaneously. I will also point out that we're showing five move controllers with a PlayStation 3, one PlayStation, but you can daisy chain PlayStation 3s for added devices if you want to. We also support our SDK for this, is any human interface device standard um, is supported. So you can write your own drivers for things, game controllers that adhere to that. Let's go ahead and go back to our scene. And we are uh, loaded up. The virtual camera is now. Now, I'm just going to pull the trigger and zoom in, change the focal length with my virtual camera. I'm walking around, moving through my scene. Dave is puppeting a light in real time. In addition, we have Lino over here puppeting the character in real time. Hey there, Mr. Rabbit. Hi. How's it going? Fine. Why are you in jail? Can you please tell us what, what happened? Uh I couldn't deliver a VFX shot, oh, and no. I'm here, you know. So you you, were, you missed the budget and schedule, and uh, yeah. you, you're, okay. Yeah, that's so, what, so this is basically the jail for people who don't deliver their shots. Okay, we get it. Now, the cool thing is, uh, all these devices are acting in tandem. So we're in Lightwave's interface, right out of the box. It is supporting the PlayStation 3 device with all you purchases the move me from their store and all these devices and, and, and you I'm gonna freeze the camera now now you'll notice I can walk off stage because Dave and Lino are still puppeting these things although I've locked the camera so I found the angle that I would like with the director they're still driving the lights and the camera the performance but yet I've locked the camera because I don't want that to be distracting if I want to make that live again all I do is come back and make the camera live so you can use the trigger on the bottom of the move to zoom in you can push the button on the top and the trigger to zoom out. All these buttons are what we've mapped, but you can customize these buttons. The mapping is just all customizable. So what I want to show you now is uh, many of you have seen the work that's been done in Firefly and Battlestar Galactica and The Hunger Games and all the things we've been showing here, The Amazing Spider-Man. Our renderer is a 20-year award-winning renderer. I'm now hitting a button and I'm going into our renderer. This is the full ray trace renderer in our application. So you see, I'm driving the camera still, he's driving the lights, and he's driving the puppet. We're ray tracing our full renderer iteration. I'm gonna lock off the camera, and now you see that they're still puppeting these devices and our renderer's going. Move the light a little bit up to his head so we just have his face. Raise the light up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna freeze, and you see how fast it now iterates. That is the full ray trace renderer now that is done. It iterated that fast, resolved because we lock this off and there you go you can send that off we have a workflow at the top where you can click one button and save the frame out send that out if you have an animation it will save the frame number automatically for you this kind of uh, uh, workflow came from me sitting in the hot seat next to uh, production designers like Rick Carter needing to see something and I wanted to be able to capture our walkthrough but even to take that further what we've implemented recently I just want to show you this this is pretty uh, interesting I'm just going to free up our scene and go back to our OpenGL. I'm going to then uh, turn off our VPR and go to our live camera and uh, basically unlock everything. Am I unlocked? No, I'm camera you're, locked. You're, you're there we go. Okay. Going. So I'm going to unlock everything. And what we're going to do now is record a full take. So I'm back here. I'm the director. Dave Verba is the uh, cinematographer, and he's going to be recording the take with his device. Right, so I don't Sweet. have to be at the computer to do this. I can do this remotely. Remotely. So we are with five devices with the PlayStation 3 out of the box with Lightwave 11.5. Lino is puppeting the character in real time. So yeah. we're going to make a take right now. So you ready, Lino? Or you, you're going to be on, so you better do good, or you're yeah, going to be yeah, replaced. Yeah, I am. Okay. I am. So, and action. Oh, one, two, one, in a country jail. The prison bells and I began to wail. 
The band will jump in on the dump, began to swing. Your shooter's not gonna add your Brucey. And cut. Come. All right, that's a take. Oh Let's God. see that take back, please. Please play back. There's our take. There's the performance, all recorded as a take in Lightwave in real time with PlayStation 3 move devices. The PlayStation 3 is plugged into Lightwave. We have our take archive. So you've just done a complete virtual. This is a version of what we did on these films available in Lightwave with the PlayStation 3, these move controllers. Why this technology is important is because if you're doing architectural visualization, if you're doing set design, if you're doing walking through sets to do virtual location scouts, you now have all the power and the technology to do that in your hands. If you purchase Lightwave for $14.95 and you get a PlayStation 3 with the Move controllers, you download the Move Me software from their store. You have everything that we just showed you. There's no external renderer needed. There's no plug-in. There's no TDs that you have to support it. You don't have to have him sitting at the computer to record your take. He could remotely walk around and record the takes while you're on set. This is really fundamentally going to change a lot of the workflow that we're dealing with. So let's take us out of this take and let's do a little bit more. Okay, so I'm live again. I'm going to show you how I can easily, with this trigger on the bottom, zoom in, show how the camera is able to uh, change the focal length. If I hold the button on the top, I'm zooming out. Again, all these buttons, I'm going to zoom way out to show you kind of like the set. Again, Franchino Lupo did the set and the character in the Roma. We have an inter international user base, yeah, and we yeah. love our users around the world that are telling their stories. This kind of technology facilitates that. I think virtual technology allows people to really make the projects better. We now are running this virtual camera, puppeting the camera, puppeting the lights. We're controlling all of that with off the shelf. Now, we're going to take it a little step further. I'm going to freeze the scene. I'm going to find an angle I like. I'm going to freeze my camera. They're still able to puppet the, the lights and puppet the character. I'm going to walk over, show you a little bit about our stereoscopic rig. So we have the camera properties I'm going to pull up. Now, um, I've, been using, uh, I've, been, I've been doing stereoscopic production for about 15 years. I worked with Jeff Kleiser and the gang at Kleiser Walzak. Uh, I was really mentored by Chuck Kabisky in the industry. If you don't know Chuck, Chuck is an award-winning visual effects supervisor. Um, and he was a stereoscopic supervisor for Avatar. Chuck gave Jim Cameron his first job working, working at Roger Corman Studios, and he's an amazing person. I, I love Chuck. But um, the stereo camera, when I started uh, in this position, we threw out all the stuff that was in Lightwave, and we put a new algorithm in there for stereo. So how simple this is, if you want to move into stereo production, there are three things you need to know. Interocular in stereo is the distance between the two cameras and your two eyes. Then there's the convergence point which is where you want to focus the attention of the stereoscopic effect. All of those things are integrated in this rig in a very simple way. They're interactive in the viewport. Let me show you something that's very uh, uh, cool about this. We're going to go into the perspective view, and I'm just going to pull out. You see our stereoscopic camera rig is in there. And I'm going to show you when you turn on the stereo effect, it's a click of a button, and then you go into uh, your convergence point is right in the viewport. Let me zoom in a little closer so you can see. And this panel is kind of over here. But you see the camera, the stereo cameras. You grab your nodal point. You drag out the convergence point. All of that is dynamic and animatable within your shot. So when you saw all those great dynamic scenes in Avatar where the action was happening far and it came towards the camera, the reason why the stereo works so well is because they tracked uh, Chuck Comiskey supervised every shot, but they dynamically track the convergence point in interocular to make it perfect. So when you have control to animate that, dynamic control, you can click in the window and set that. So I just set the convergence point where the rabbit is. Very easy. I'm going to go back to our camera view, and if you don't have some Lightwave 3D uh, stereo glasses, pick some of these up, and let's all put this on because I'm going to activate the window. Um, we, with one button click, you turn on the anaglyph filter, and you are in 3D. Now I'm going to now activate my camera again, and we're going to move through the scene stereoscopically. You can see how the stereo effect is happening. I'm going to now move out again, zoom the scene out, so we can see the, how the perspective of the 3D. I mean, this is really kind of fun technology. You get right in there. Again, you can tweak this. I, I just set these settings to something that was pleasing to me. But, you know, you have full control of, of, of the, the stereoscopic effect. Of course, you know, this is not too bad. I'm just going to freeze the camera here. Well, actually, let's just do another take all together. Let's record this stereo take. I'm going to zoom out. Oh, my God. 
all the way so we get a pronounced effect. All right. There's some foreground objects. And you ready? Let's you're go. on again, Lino. You better impress us or you're fired, buddy. Oh, my God. We're going to get another actor up here. Okay. okay. And action. Here we One, go. two, part in the county jail. The freezer bell sounds that began to wait. The bell went jumping off and up again to swing. And the shooters knocking on Jerbers. Cut. See, let's there we go. Let's see that take in 3D. So we're playing back stereoscopically within Lightwave uh, with the PlayStation 3 device. You see how easy it was to set up the stereo. Stereo is a tool for you to focus the viewer's attention. It is very simple, though. It's a very uh, simple formula uh, in most cases. The anaglyph filter I, I will point out to you is what we put in the viewport so you can put these cheap glasses on and just see it, but we automatically outport, out export full resolution right and left eye out of Lightwave and set it up for you and name, name those files for appropriately. So this is just a way for you to nail your stereo without having to have special display or you know projectors or glasses or whatever. It's a very quick way, but it messes with your color space. So when you're doing the final things, you would basically export right and left eye, which we've set up for you, take it into Nuke, take it into After Effects, and you're in business. You, output, you export that to whatever display mechanism you want. So this is really uh, a quick way with the cardboard glasses or whatever. I mean, it's, it, it's a simple way so you don't have to have special hardware to make this work. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this walk, you know, this, this virtual walkthrough for our studio tools. It shows you how you can puppet the character, you can run the lights, you can do the virtual cameras. It's all in Lightwave, 1495 includes that. We also support the Innersense VCAM system, which is the system we used on Avatar. We support the uh, 3D connection devices. Uh, the space tracker and all of those, you plug them in and you know, when we first implemented these, they were just like any other device driver. It's like everything zeroed out and you have to go in and figure it all out and I said to Dave, I said, look, I want to set these settings the way that I would want them to be for myself so that when they plug a USB in the first time it works the way it should and that's what we've done in a lot of the features in this. So you don't have to go and tweak. You will notice in the stereoscopic camera we default to the 70 millimeter uh, interocular because that is the, the average of the human eye distance. You don't have to go in and turn it on and then go, oh, it's zero or it's some weird number. It defaults to what it should be from the beginning. And that is because the Lightwave group has a unique setup where we have users on the development team who are, who are giving suggestions to this before it even goes out to you. So the workflow is just as important as the technology. Computers are good at setting all these details up. Why make us suffer through it every time? So I hope you enjoyed this uh, demo.